Welcome to 11.6. We are looking at volumes of prisms and cylinders. I just noticed I forgot to highlight this. Okay, got to be consistent here, huh? Okay, there you go. So we're looking at volumes of prisms and cylinders. Now, when you see prisms and cylinders, what I would like to have come to your mind is uh, this diagram <clears throat> from uh, 11.5 and thinking prisms okay and cylinders and what is unique what is in common about prisms and cylinders and you are correct they have two bases each so a prism starts with a particular now when I say base I mean the area of the base the capital B base so we have a base here and then that same uh, shape is carried consistently from the bottom all the way up to the second the other base remember these two bases are congruent and parallel that's the same thing also with a cylinder here is your uh, capital B base <clears throat> And that same area is carried all the way from one base all the way up to the second base. Okay, so we are looking now at the uh, calculating the volume of prisms and cylinders. So those guys have two bases. Volume. What are we talking about when we say volume? <clears throat> Remember, volume in basic terms is the space inside the space inside of some three-dimensional uh, figure and we measure this volume in cubic units cubic units so for example here is a cube <clears throat> and if each one of these uh, sides of this cube was one foot so this length here is one foot this one also each of these little individual edges as we learned uh, from the last section each of these edges are one foot long then to find the volume we would find we would take the side length times the side length times the side length in other words base times width times height that sort of thing uh, which in other words if in a cube they're all the same length so it'd be s cubed so one foot times one foot times one foot would give us one foot squared so this is a cube whose volume is one cubic foot one i said square didn't i one foot cubed <clears throat> okay so when we are measuring volume we're talking about cubic units so let's look at prism prism is pretty and actually um let me let me show you the connection between the two of these and then we'll focus in on uh, one at a time and notice like i said that for both the prism and the cylinder that you start each of these have two bases you start with a base so you figure out what the area of this base is capital B and then you just multiply it times the height so and it's the same thing for the cylinder you f figure out the area of this base which in this case is a circle and then multiply it times the height so the basic formula when you think of area when you see area, make sure you think about capital B times the height. <clears throat> it will be the same for both the prism and also, oops, I should write in here, cylinder. Mm, here we go. Cylinder, how do you spell cylinder? Cylinder, okay, and then make that pink. Okay, so you have the same formula that we use for both the prism and the cylinder capital base times the height for both the prism and the cylinder and then when we go to doing the pyramid and the cone it'll be very similar uh, to this we start with this but it's just one-third capital base times the height so prism uh, now this particular prism has a rectangle as its base and both of these bases of course are parallel and congruent so both of these are re rectangles 
Now you can have different shapes. You can have a triangular prism where this base is a triangle. For example, like down here, this guy is a triangle <clears throat> and it is a prism. But uh, when your, so what you do is, uh, the capital B is the area of the base. So you need to figure out, okay, what formula do I need to calculate the area of this particular kind of base? And this base, like we said, is a rectangle. So it'd be base times width. Now notice this lowercase b is the length here of capital B. Capital B is the area of this, this base. So we are using the term base in a number of different, like three different ways uh, here. But hopefully you have the base understanding of these three different uh, ways here. So you find the area of the base, <clears throat> which is capital B, and then you multiply it times the height. <clears throat> okay, for a, <clears throat> a cylinder, same exact concept. Find uh, the area of the base. In this case, the base though is a circle, and you, you will remember that the area of a circle is pi r squared. And so for the area of the base, you plug in pi r squared and then multiply that times your, your height. Okay, let's go to some basic, <clears throat> simple building blocks kind of idea. <clears throat> and yeah, let me, let me first show this example in the book. <clears throat> okay. If we wanted to figure out what the uh, volume of uh, this funky shape is, then like we said, volume is always in cubic units. So here is a unit cube. So this uh, solid is one cubic unit. And so to find the volume of this funky shape, what we would do is break it down into individual unit cubes. You can't always do that, but uh, this shape allows us to be able to do so. And notice what we're doing here. Uh, see how they have these, these faint lines here? So they are trying to differentiate where, so here is one uh, block, one cubic uh, block, cube I guess you call it. Here's another one uh, behind that. And it may take you some time to understand and be able to see this uh, three-dimensional object that is represented on a two-dimensional plane here. So we got to get kind of tricky uh, with this and kind of have uh, some different methods of representing these things. So this, of course, on, on the front here is, is your, your front surface. Now the dotted line, like we talked about before, dotted line is what is invisible. These are the edges that are invisible and you're not able to see, except for this. What is that thing? I'm not sure why they put that. That's some, I oh, no, no, that's a mistake. That's a plain old mistake. They goofed on that one. Get my money back for my, my book. Um, so let's let's go to your, your notes and have you think about this basic little shape here. And, and you uh, draw in, draw in these little uh, guideline marks to uh, indicate the separation of each individual unit cube. So here's a unit cube up on top, and this thing is three units tall, so you should have uh, three here. So you need to divide this into, or have two divider sections, and notice that all these things are parallel. What you do, and mine's drawn pretty lousily, isn't it? But it should have been down a little bit lower here. <clears throat> but all these lines are parallel with lines that run alongside of them. So as you're drawing, so for example, this little nook here that I'm, I'm drawing, this little segment, is parallel to this uh, edge over here. And then same thing, this little uh, uh, segment here is parallel to these other, other edges. So take some time, think about that and begin to be able to think three-dimensionally on this two-dimensional plane. And let me see, do I want to help you to get ready? No, never mind. You can do it. Yeah, you can do it. <clears throat> so for number two here, 
you need to draw a prism and it's a square prism so I want you to be able to draw this kind of a, a shape but let me put it up on here make it bigger and so the books are all going down I'm in a rush to try to get this done before my next class comes in <laughs> um, so here is a uh, larger uh, version of the same thing so you can see it so, so draw this do the blue first draw this rectangle right the blue rectangle and then from that draw these little diagonals these black diagonals going off here and then this top part is parallel to the top part of the the blue rectangle and then come down and notice how these two sides are are parallel and then these diagonals also need to be parallel okay and then after you've done that then draw the invisible edges that we cannot see and mine's drawn pretty lousily isn't it but uh, you want these two to be parallel uh, with each other and make this dotted so that it indicates that you cannot see that back part and then these two are parallel and then these two are parallel okay so take some time and figure out how to draw this three-dimensional square prism and then label your edges the lengths of your edges and remember for prism and really for all volumes you start out with this basic of capital B times the height and what is the shape of this base it is a square so you could uh, um, so you put in uh, base times width here for the base and then multiply it times the height of 12 so you're gonna have 5 times 5 is the area of this uh, base and then you multiply that area times the height which is 12 so 5 times 5 times 12 and then for number 3 <clears throat> uh, let's do this for a cylinder so how do you draw a cylinder uh, draw do not draw a circle up on top here notice that your cylinder this is not a circle is it it's really an oval because you're looking at a circle from an angle so that's not a circle uh, represented on a two-dimensional uh, uh, plane uh, but instead draw an oval draw an oval and then draw your radius there and then draw your two sides coming straight down and parallel to each other and then draw another oval so it should look exactly like this oval on top uh, but underneath the front side edge I guess uh, you can see that but the back edge you cannot so make that uh, dashed or mine looks like it's dotted but just make it some some broken line back there to indicate that we cannot uh, see that part and to find the volume you use the same basic formula volume equals capital B times H and so what is the shape of this base it is a circle so you plug in your uh, pi r squared for the base and then multiply it times the height now in this case they give you that the volume is uh, 684 so for the volume put 684 equals and then you're gonna have pi r squared times h you know the h is 18 so now you have everything except for the r and then you can solve this equation for r there's the bell okay let's finish this up Cavallari's principle is uh, I'll explain it more in class to you but basically all it says is that whether you have a leaning tower of Giza pushed over the side or whether it's uh, straight up and down a right uh, angle it's still going to be the same volume so you still use the height of uh, in this case eight don't use the slant height don't use the slant height, but use the perpendicular height and then in this case it's a prism and it's a triangular base and so this is the area equation for the area of a triangle one half base the little b oops i did my arrow wrong didn't i it should be the arrow over here no 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 actually i'm sorry it is the the height there so height of the triangle which is five so for this uh lowercase b put nine for the H, put five, and then for the this uh, other H of the solid, put eight. Okay, hope that was helpful to you. May the Lord bless you.